The executive sedan segment is without question one of the most cutthroat categories in the entire automotive world. You have the players like the 5 Series, the E-Class, the Audi A6. These are kind of the staples of that category. But with the way that the world is going, so many of these cars are now going to electrification. And this is what makes this Acura RLX interesting. It has a three and a half liter V6 and three electric motors. We'll break down what it is they all do later in the video. But in Canada, it is only available as a hybrid. So this puts it up against the Volvo S90 T8, the BMW 530e. Now those are big names to go up against for this Acura and the question stands, does this $70,000 Acura RLX Elite have what it takes to stand up against those competitors? Well let's go for a drive and find out. So as I said the Canadian market only gets this hybrid configuration. So we have a three and a half liter naturally aspirated V6, three electric motors that implements Acura's super handling all-wheel drive. Now it's interesting because this car also has a regenerative braking system and when you're driving along you can see the power displayed with your heads-up display or with the screen on the top here in front of you. Now with this hybrid system if you're ever in pure electric driving mode that means that you're in rear wheel drive mode because two electric motors one for each rear wheel are using that to push you forward you have another electric motor as part of the seven speed dual clutch transmission now a very significant separation from the rlx to all of its hybrid competitors is that everyone else in this class the bmw 530e the cadillac ct6 hybrid the Volvo S90 T8, a plug-in hybrid. This isn't, this doesn't have a pure electric driving range. It has a 1.3 kilowatt hour lead acid battery behind the rear seats. And we'll talk about some of the complications with that in a minute. But what it is providing you is very low speed crawling in electric mode and then coasting when you're maybe coming to a stop, the engine will turn off and then you'll rely on those rear electric motors. Acura will say that this is the exact same system that has been taken from the NSX, the hybrid supercar. And although it's kind of true, they've definitely taken lessons that they've learned from the development of that car and implemented into this one. For example, this car has true torque vectoring. And that's another thing that you can see in the power display. And it's something that you can feel as well. If you're ever taking a corner hard, you can feel the outside wheel pushing you. But no, taking lessons learned from a supercar does not make this a sports sedan by any means. It does have relatively quick acceleration. The low end torque of those electric motors and then the high end power band of that naturally aspirated engine does make this feel like a reasonably quick car. And you do have a sport mode dedicated down here, but I can't really tell you what it does beyond making the gears hold a little longer. I don't really like how this car drives. It's wallowy and you can really feel the weight, but driving at any speed, even when the electric motors aren't running at their full capacity, this car is reasonably quiet. At highway speed, you hear a little bit of wind noise over the wing mirrors. Now, as I said in the beginning, this is the Elite. You've got two trims in Canada, the Tech and the Elite. The Tech comes with close to everything that you could imagine, but the Elite brings a few other nice bits and pieces. So we have the 360 degree camera. We have the ventilated front seat. For the back seat, you've got those sun shades that are implemented into the door cards. I really like that feature. And then you also have the upgraded Krell 14 speaker sound system. But with the starter RLX, you're getting everything that you expect. You get all of the safety equipment, all of the outside seats are heated. You've got the heated steering wheel and all of the leather that you see here is standard equipment. Saying that, we should be talking about the cabin. And this is one of the big letdowns with the RLX. This is a $70,000 car but it really doesn't feel like it. All of the materials are lovely. You've got leather along the door cards and soft touch plastics pretty much everywhere, even down here at the bottom of the transmission tunnel. But it doesn't feel like it's representative of what this class 
has on offer. You have two screens in front of you that are pretty low res. You can really see the pixel edging, even at a distance from where I'm sitting to looking down at this one. The bottom screen is a touch screen, but it isn't really fast to respond. You've got tactic feedback, which is a nice assurance knowing that you have hit something, but there's a significant delay between hitting something and then whatever it is you want appearing. Another fault with this system is that it doesn't have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. It does feel like a previous generation system. I mean, this top screen here where you'll see more information displayed like in navigation, that comes straight out of the previous generation Honda Odyssey. And the button layout is just a bit strange. Everything that you use to control the top screen is within this center stack here. And every time I get in, I keep on thinking that this is the volume knob, but it isn't. The real volume knob is up here. It's a good thing to see that they actually have one, but to have the very limited amount of climate control buttons that you have to use the touch screen to manipulate some of the settings like your climate zones, and then using everything down here to control things within the screen that can't be touched, it just doesn't feel jointed together very well. It doesn't feel very thought out. And I don't like how it all comes together so narrowly. Again, you'll have a nice suite of leather and wood, but it just doesn't feel like a car that costs $70,000 in here. And I think that's the greatest fault with this car is that it doesn't feel like something that belongs in this price range and this category. It's got a good enough size back seat. It's significantly better than the M550i that I drove quite a while ago. The rear seats are okay. Headroom, I'd say, is a little tight, but the biggest problem back there is that they actually don't have any kind of manipulation to fold down the seats. That battery pack will eat into the boot space a little bit, but it will make those back seats rigid. You don't even have a ski pass through. The trunk is a good enough size to make up for it, but because you have no flexibility in folding down those seats, like you couldn't take skis, you couldn't take any other long items, that's a problem. For the 2018 model year, the Acura RLX received its mid-life update. This car was originally launched in 2014. And for this generation, you'll find a few new color options, some interior trim options, and then also the redesigned front and rear fascias. With the RLX, you've got the standard design features that you find in every Acura these days, the dual eye headlights and that diamond grill up front. But when you take away those two very significant design features, I don't think you're left with much. There isn't much else to talk about with the design. It's a bit bland, a bit shapeless. From the rear though, it has to be said that this car looks strikingly familiar to the current BMW 7 Series. Let me know if you agree with me in the comments down below. It sounds like a really harsh thing to say, but I really do mean it when I say that I think this car looks best at night when you can see those LEDs in action. For such a competitive class of car, the RLX does feel out of place. It feels like it's punching too far above its weight category. For a $70,000 car, it doesn't feel like it on the inside. And despite this car having hybrid capabilities, all of its competitors a plug-in hybrid. But I feel like if you are looking at a 530E or a Volvo S90 T8, that's one of the appealing things to those vehicles, their dedicated pure electric range. So if you are looking for an electrified executive sedan, I'd say take a look at the RLX. It does offer some great things like a very comfortable ride and the cabin is quiet, but for a vehicle in this class with the competitors of plug-in, it doesn't match up at all. And I feel like if you're wanting to spend this kind of money on this kind of car, it's better off elsewhere.